this diagram has some values associated with it, which are derived from some work that I did. I acted as a technical director for the Moonstone Group, and we spent some time in Kazakhstan. Uh, the results of that work re uh, ended up in the uh, development of um, and fl successful flotation of Central Asia resources. And uh, this is a uh, uh, an estimate that I did based on the license area that we held. There was something like 250 known occurrences of gold. And I worked on the basis of uh, those 250. I'd hoped that I'd get at least two up to four technical feasibility. So what this tells you is that of 100 primary targets, by which I mean anything from a uh, abandoned open pit to a, a trench with some scruffy looking uh, quartz veins, which with the eye of faith you may feel had some potential. Within that extreme, I would then hope to select 20% 20, 20 of those in which I think that one could spend money intelligently uh, up to the point of putting down a couple of drill holes, scout drill holes. And of those 20, I'd be perfectly delighted if two of them bulked out to the point where I could justify undertaking evaluation drilling, which would allow me to be compliant with some of the resource definitions, which we'd be looking at later, and allow me to do a financial model under pre-feasibility and to undertake some basic uh, mine design, minerals engineering. And from that, to be able to make two decisions, uh, either, well, three actually, either to abandon, to uh, cycle back, to do more exploration, or to go through into this transition of full technical feasibility, which then provides the blueprint for development. And I presented this to um, a group of Australians, ones who are familiar with um, Western the Yulgon block. They told me, Dennis, this is wrong. Add an extra zero over there. So for those of you who are coming in um, to the minerals business, and uh, Ahmed, uh, I understand that this is your position. The further... Um, down in the food chain you are, the greater the risk, but the more cheaper it is to vend in. The higher you go up in the food chain, the lower the risk and the more expensive it is to get in. And perhaps the most important takeaway from this first session is that if you're going to enter into a discussion with a group of promoters, um, please feel free to use this diagram and ask them to put a little cross on exactly where their project lies within this universe. Uh, it is step one of the process of valuation. And as you can see over here, there is this boundary which I've identified where we have the transition from the juniors through into the majors. And that is the interface where we are looking at acquisitions um, and majors will vend in, it becomes more expensive um, to do so and many of the majors now undertake exploration almost by proxy because if you lower down in the food chain the chances are you are a lot more hungry. I hope you haven't mortgaged your houses uh, but there is uh, in general a significant commitment to make these things work and of course thereby lies the danger. Uh, the Briexes of this world were bred in this type of environment where there were enormous pressures uh, to make the results look better than perhaps they were and certainly in that case definitely a lot better than they purported to be. So that I think describes where we are at and uh, the um, full technical feasibility involves funding. Um, at the pre-feasibility, we are dealing with pre-funding. And these are fundamental concepts which I will be returning to over the next few hours. 
Um, and uh, we will probably come back to this diagram to, to calibrate our science. So, um, any other questions at um, this point? Uh, Steve uh, is concerned that the audio is breaking up a little bit. Um, I hope that's not universally the problem. Uh, any questions at this stage from anyone before we move on? So, Bruce, under 43101, a pre-feasibility cannot use uh, all of the resources, whereas a preliminary assessment scoping study can include inferred resources. Um, yes, the inferred resource relates to the uh, amount of uh, confidence we have at the geostatistical side. Um, and uh, thank you for that. We've got uh, essentially... A, a description here based on the definitions from the professional guidelines that anything in this domain over here can be described as a scoping, um, whereas as we go into the pre-fees, we've got to have essentially a thing called an indicated resource, um, and we will uh, be, uh, and this in a sense is anticipating where I'm heading. So I think we've uh, made a good start, and let's now move on. And I'm going to return to this slide and to this one over here and the following three uh, later in the course because they relate to valuation that we need at the exploration stage. Um, and the... Uh, valuation techniques that apply to exploration properties. Where we can undertake a discounted cash flow model, that, if you like, is the gold standard of evaluation. If we have not got assets that under the rules, and we've got here the indicated resource that we need, and again, we'll define that very precisely later today, um, where we don't have it, we have to use a plan B, and to keep it simple, they're rather unsatisfactory. It's, it's, a, it's an art uh, as much as a science. So uh, these uh, slides I will return to, um, and what I want to now focus in on is the terminology that are used by the investment community, and in particular, the investment banks. One of the terms that uh, they do use is a thing called a preliminary information memorandum. And um, I've been involved in creating one of these. Um, it essentially is where you've got some assets which are at, um, if we like, the scoping stage. We think we've got some good uh, potential, but we haven't got the projects up to an advanced stage. And we want to be able to have an independent view on that. Um, and the investment banks will get involved. Um, and indeed, where they are looking to set up alliances, um, are quite interested in talking to people who have early stage projects. And you can actually pay the banks to produce such a thing as a preliminary information memorandum. And you can see here the basic components of that. Um, I've used that uh, in the past reasonably successfully um, for the simple reason that quite a few of the investment banks may well be working on advanced projects, have good working relationship with some of the majors, and may well be prepared to use their good offices to support a junior company. So I've, I've used this quite successfully in the past. 